So, well, thanks. Well, thank you very much for that. And hopefully this won't be death by PowerPoint. As you maybe have seen there, there's not a huge amount of slides because we're going to make it a bit more interactive, um, especially with a, a topic such as, as this kind of being creative. Um, it's hard to put down when you're just reading bullet points of a slide. So we've gone through that, um, the introduction to Canva. Um, Canva is, I'm sure some of you, I, I know some of you have um, used it uh, before. Um, and some of you maybe are just coming to that or are just aware of the name. Um, it is ultimately a, um, oops, so I can click over, um, an incredibly powerful and intuitive graphic design tool. Um, I think that's what they they call themselves on their website. I would say and argue it's probably a little bit more than just a, an intuitive graphic design tool. It has a huge amount of integration and kind of collaboration work. Um, how. I've used it in the past, how a lot of other uh, people that I know use it is um, it's great for generating kind of social media content. So if you're part of an organization, it's really, really useful to generate kind of um, really nice, engaging images that then you can, you can put out. Likewise, setting up for things like presentations uh, like this. I know that uh, Andrea's doing her presentation actually within Canva uh, this evening. And also for uh, making things like posters, sort of generic um, uh, physical content as well. And uh, physical marketing is a really useful tool for that. Um, it's ideal for collaborating. Um, so if you've got volunteers or, or maybe you're doing it yourself, sharing ideas or uh, sending off completed um, ideas to one another is a tool which is accessible within Canva. So it, it kind of excels if you've got a, a small group of people working together. Um, there's templates for almost every application. I've never found a template which I haven't been able to use. So even if it's just by the size, if I'm looking for, say, an A5 poster or flyer, or I'm looking for an A1 poster or a specific um, size for a website, say on social media, that I'll, I'll touch on a little bit more. Um, it's always there. The, the sizes are always there. There's a base that you can kind of go from as a, a, a standardized base. Um, the best thing about Canva uh, is that ultimately it is free to use. So on a personal um, account, it's free for anyone to, 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 to rock up and log on and have access to it. And there are pro versions, which has... Um, uh, much further reach um, and the tools that you have access to on the pro version are slightly um, kind of expanded on um, the, the free version. So how that generally looks, and don't worry, there's no sales pitch here. I have, I have no commercial ties to um, Canva in any way, shape or form. Um, and that's on the recording. Um, the, the free version for a lot of people will be more than enough. Um, and I've had a little comparison uh, between a free account that I've got and then the, 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 uh, Pro one that I use through the charity, um, but the free one, a drag and drop editor is common uh, across all of the the um, accounts. Um, you'll have one million over one million uh, templates, which is m more than you'd probably ever need. Um, there's lots and lots of different designs which are kind of pre baked ideas. So if you're looking for a bit of inspiration, or you're maybe not um, super creative, or this is the first time you're foraying into, um, um graphic design for posters or social media you can have kind of ready-made ideas kind of presented to you there's a lot of graphics stock images which are there to use um and also the printing and delivery service I had to put that down because it is part of what they, they can offer but i would i don't think i've used anybody who has printed off a poster with canva before typically you'd usually generate it and then download it yourself and, and distribute it yourself um the real standout the big difference from from my side of things, so I've kind of kept a couple of slides coming out, which are my my top and most useful uh, tips for uh, on Canva and the tools, is the brand. So on the pre side, uh, the the pro side of things, sorry, there is a a brand kit. So if you're part of an organization, if you're part of a voluntary organization or a business, then you can build that brand kit, which is always what I would kind of suggest you to do. And that can be as simply as if you've already got a logo you can just upload that logo and that brand kit can be generated from that. So all those colors can be pulled out, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment as well. So that's a really useful thing to your brand is then stamped on it. And if you're doing collaborative work, then you have a, a, a an area called the brand kit, which will keep things like your fonts, things like your logos, things like um, the tone of maybe some of your messages, they'll all be kind of uh, condensed down. The, so as I was saying, the, the, the free one, is you, all you need is an email address just to sign up for that. And I'll, there'll be some links included when um, Andy shares around the slides. At the end, there'll be links, so don't worry about that. Um, for the 
the pro one that does break down to uh, 99 pounds a year however if you are part of a charity you can access the pro one for free so i think for the uk one it's just a registered charity number yeah um, andrea could you say yes or no to that i'm seeing shaking heads uh, nodding heads yep it's just the the registered charity number and then you can have free access to um the unlimited pro package which is absolutely phenomenal um uh, there's a huge amount of stock images and there are some more AI tools, which I think uh, Andrew is going to be covering as well. So my main standouts really for the, uh, for using Canva is the bespoke branding kit is the number one. This is something I use day in and day out that image, which is on the screen there that just kind of shows you that I just uploaded one logo from our uh, charity and it pulls out all the colors and uh, registers all the colors individually. So then if you're making kind of co a cohesive, a branding kit or your marketing materials all your branding all your 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 fonts all your logos and all your colors are all really cohesive which is a really a useful tool when you're trying to get the brand out there and um, the it all sits there as well so once you do it once it just kind of takes over and you can have it for multiple projects so say if you've got um you're working with a number of different organizations and um, different projects. Maybe you just want different images like the Climate Action Five or Cozy Kingdom. Well, if for, for example, then there, there could be a, a difference in that particular brand. However, they can all be kind of saved under. And that feature is on the, the pro version um, that you, you do get that, which I will show you. One of the selling points, which is why Canva appeared on my radar, first of all, was the templates because I didn't know what the right sizes were for social media posts at that particular point. Um, unlike um, a lot of people, I just kind of wanted to get something which looked quite nice to do the job and then generate it and I could pull it off and, and put it on the, the social media channels for the organization. And on the free um, accounts, which I would urge you just to register for, just have a look at, um, it's you could just type in a size. So if you just need an A4 poster for a community event coming up, you could just search in the top bar, which I'll show you on the next slide, how to do that. Um, all the templates are there. How it gets used most uh, most regularly for us is um, when we're trying to design um, things on Instagram, likes of Instagram for reels or for squares, and there are certain resolution. That resolution is already pre-made for us, um, so we can develop content which is bespoke for that particular social media channel. Um, you also have the, the choice of having elements. Uh, elements is what Canva calls basically everything, which is an image, an icon, uh, graphics or text. Um, and that's how you're almost ed editing and changing um, a template that you've chosen, uh, which we will run through just now because I think I'm a visual learner. So it's a much easier for me just to run through a, a quick demo um, of everything I've said there and just to hopefully break down the barrier and, and show you how kind of easy it is that you can get something um, super, super um, good looking and accessible. So I will move over here and in one of those Blue, Pe uh, Blue Peter-esque moments, um, that should be Canva in front of you. So when you sign into Canva, be it a free account or um, a, a pro account, this is the screen that you'll be presented with and it kind of shows you along here, various tabs to get things going. Um, some of the stuff we touched on the presentations in the video um, and also things you might want to try. The biggest thing for us is this search box here, which hopefully you can see my cursor floating around on. And for this particular example, I wanted to do an Instagram, so Insta post and a square. So that I know that that's gonna be the perfect size just for the sake of this example. Um, I did have one created earlier on. Let's I go back here, Instagram post. So this was a generic free um, to use image that I just found and thought, let's see what I can add to this. So you, you have on this half of the screen, the actual image and everything here is you're able to interact with. On the left-hand side of the screen, you have the elements and the text. So if you're looking to kind of edit the the uh, the image, um, then you can search in the elements. So let's have a bash at that. I thought for this environmental, let's say that this was a picture of a plant, very pretty. Let's say this particular post is going to be for a plant sale. So I think we should have text. So I'm just selecting text because I know that's what I want to do. And there is 
it will always present you with various um, options for text. Um, I think this one looks good enough for me. That will present itself right on the screen. I can just drag it into the place where I want it. Andrew's probably going to shout at me because they'll we we'll have to be obeying, uh, obeying the rule of thirds and all sorts of things. Um, but for the sake of this, I'll just pop in plant sale. And I simply a drag and drop. Plant sale. And we'll put in a subheading for a location and a date, so the 10th of Feb, 2 p.m. And we will put a location because that's usually a pretty important thing. Ecolab. So, and it always prompts you in the middle. So, as a base, there, that's a fairly useful. Um, little flyer that I've generated or a post for Instagram, all the right siding, but it's missing some some judge, let's say. So I was talking about the branding kit and down this left hand side where you've got the options for text elements, uploads if you wanted to upload your own images, draw images in, um, a branding kit. So I have spent a bit of time today making sure everything was up to scratch because this would be the charity that has my logo for the organization already saved in there because as soon as we got this, I made that there and that popped up and you could see along here all the colors that are then associated with our charity. So that has made a nice kind of image straight away. If I say wanted to change any part of any element of this, say that particular plant wasn't um, good enough for me. If I navigate back up to the elements, again, everything is changeable. I could just search in elements. Plant. And I'm thinking, let's go for a free one. This particular one. Perfect. And that is as easy as it needs to be. Um, I would then simply share it, download it in whatever format I needed to download it in, either for printing or for um, getting out onto Instagram in this case. And that's it saved. Whenever you, you close that off, it'll be then saved again. Or if you wanted to collaborate with someone else, you can send that um actual image back to someone else and they can edit it or if you need to have someone sign off to make sure the branding's fine or whatever. Um, it's just a really, really great collaborative and hopefully in that very quick kind of run through shows you how simple it can be just to put something together, which is fairly um, sort of good looking, I would say, but I'm, I'm biased. Um, what I'll do is before getting into anything else of some great AI tools, I can hand that over to you, Andrea. If I can work out how to stop the sharing screen. There we go. Stop share. A whistle stop tour. Yeah, we'll do it right now. Um, there will be time for wider questions at the end, but if anyone had any quick questions for Gavin at the moment, let us know. Absolutely. Apologies for the very squeaky chair as well. <laughs> Not though, okay. I will share my screen again. So get onto some of the bit, a bit more designy sort of stuff. Um, there we go. So yeah, some basic design rules just to think about when you're creating those simple uh, Canva, using those simple Canva templates. Um, and one is picking the right template. Gavin sort of um, covered that in talking about whether it's right for Instagram or if it's for Facebook or if um, you're creating a poster, uh, make sure you're looking in the right place for the template. But then also pick something that matches the style of your organisation. Don't pick a template that looks very corporate if you're a grassroots community organisation holding a fun family event. You're obviously going to want to be quite cartoony with that, um, whereas you don't want to be all straight lines and corporate if you're doing something like that. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, as well, Gavin did it really well there, spacing. 
Um, he didn't oversaturate it with so many things. Uh, so just being mindful there of not cramming things together. Um, and that it's okay to have space. Some people get very, very scared to leave too much space on a poster. Um, but sometimes your content just needs some space to breathe. Um, so you need to give it enough room. Um, so don't be worried if there's only a few bits of information you're putting on your poster. Um, just space everything out. Um, use colours that complement each other. Um, Canva actually has a really cool colour wheel um, that you can check out. Um, and it actually shows you what colour. So if you wanted one specific colour you wanted to use, it would tell you what colour at the opposite end of the colour wheel would be really useful. Or if you're going on like a tritone of the same colour, um, it'll show you what two other shades of that colour would match the one that you really want to use. Um, as well as that, there's a really good feature, not quite Canva, but it helps um, on Adobe. Um, if you want your um, designs to be quite accessible, so the colour of the text on the colour of the background, um, you can check them against each other to make sure they're going to be clear and readable for the average user. Um, yeah, avoid overkill. So if there's information or if there's um, if you're really getting into the elements, it's really easy to go, oh, all of these look great. Let's just put both of them on. Um, but you don't want to sort of death, death by graphics, I guess, <laughs> in a way um, as well. Um, text alignment is something you can think about. So uh, very often with a lot of things, we'll use left alignment. But if it's stuff like headings or just a couple of lines of information, we will um, center it. Um, but if you're doing like a whole paragraph, if you're doing bullet point lists, um, it, um, left align works really well for readability on that. Um, and talking about readability, um, fonts is something to be mindful of. So you'll see on the right hand side there. Um, can you does does anyone know what the first line says of the two bits of text on the right hand side there? So it says, "Can you read this?" Um, but if you if you couldn't read that, that's that's fair enough. Or if you could read it, it might have taken you a second. So if someone's looking at your poster and you're using this sort of fancy writing, um, this fancy sort of font, um, some fancier fonts are okay for just headings as long as you can read them very clearly. But as you can see, the font below it, which says, how about this? That is a lot clearer to read and it stands out a lot more. So sometimes being simple will actually make your design more eye-catching and people will actually instantly be able to read the words. Um, something that I covered in the last workshop we did about social media uh, last week was about using photos. Um, we really like to see on social media photos of people doing an activity, people facing the camera, people on social media really respond to that. So it's trying to use your own photos in your designs, especially for posters, is something um, to consider as well. And I think Gavin sort of captured it as well. Um, experimenting, playing around, that's the sort of thing you want to do to get used to Canva. Um, so create a couple of mock things, check it against some people, some of your peers, and see what they think about it. Um, and it'll get you thinking about the designs and uh, get you picking up some good skills there. Um, I'm going to touch on video a little bit. Um, so all the, all the design stuff that I talked about there um, applies for graphics and video. Um, but video is all slightly more complex on Canva. You can definitely still do it on the free version. Um, there are some really cool things like animated graphics. So I use this one from Canva that's waving in the corner of the screen right there. Um, and they can really add a little bit of animation to that to your video. So if it's you're using it for a reel on Instagram, for example, you would just want a short, snappy video. Um, if you're just trying to get a point across and you don't actually want to do any filming or 
anything on camera. Um, you can use these animated graphics. There's also, when you type in your text, if you click on the text box, there's the option to add some effects. So you can add effects to make your text move. So that really makes your video move, makes it eye-catching without you actually having to put too much effort into it. Um, that is where camera, uh, Canva really comes into its own in terms of video. It is really good for short social media videos. Um, I've used it a couple of times for things like that. Um, but if you are doing longer form videos where you're recording people, then you want to kind of get the sound right when you record because Canva is very, very limited in terms of sound editing. Um, you you can turn the volume up and down and that is about it. So that is just something to be mindful of if you're making videos for Canva. Um, but you can get some great background music in the elements feature, which is really good. It's all royalty free. Um, and social media actually do pick up the artist names and credit them somehow in the background when you post them quite a lot of the time. Um, so I guess that's what I mean as well when you're using layers in your video. So you'll layer your sound, you'll have your background music, and you might have some audio, other audio. Um, you can also layer visually. So we've done a thing before where someone's talking to camera and you're recording them and the video is them talking to camera, but then you layer on top of that little clips of someone doing the thing that the person's talking about. Um, so we had recruitment for a community chef recently and we had someone speaking to camera about what they wanted from the role, why it's great working in our community kitchen, but we also interspersed that with clips um, on top of that cut in different parts of the video where people in the kitchen were chopping veg or they were um, like prepping the meals and stuff like that that we do. Um, so that's why it's always good to record more than you need as well. Um, but that's if you've not got quite enough, that's where the graphics can come in handy. And there's actually some bits of stock video as well that you can use that's actually quite good. Um, you've got some really good access to that in terms of the features on Canva. Um, so here's a little bit of a video that I made in Canva. I don't know if everyone could hear volume no okay that's fine um the audio is not that interesting anyway <laughs> well it's interesting if you're into fruit trees but as you can see i've used an animated graphic to show that it is still a video and it is still moving even though there's some text on there and then i've interspersed that with little clips of you'll see it's me um in the garden talking about um planting a fruit tree um so i'll skip through it a little bit and um, so yeah there's sort of animated graphics there there is some background music but obviously you can't hear it um and then it's sort of interspersed with me sort of actually planting the tree as well <laughs> I had to do something annoyingly quite um, a bit more techy for that one where I actually had to separately go and record um, a, or an audio voiceover and then upload that into Canva. Um, you'd maybe get there after, down the line after you've made a few videos, but um, it was a bit complicated and it did take me a while. But the general gist of it is that we sort of were able to cut graphics and text and different clips together pretty easily actually in Canva. The only complicated bit was playing around with the audio after, which is why it's quite important to sort of really get your audio recorded well um, in the first instance, if you're using Canva to make your videos. Um, so I'll move on and talk a little bit about some of the AI tools. Um, so there is, um, on the free version, there is, um, some AI tools you can use, but there isn't, um, you can't get access to all of them, unfortunately. Um, there's something called, well, you can get apps. So this is the sort of menu that shows up on your, on the left of the homepage on Canva. So you've got 
access to the Magic Studio, um, and you've also got apps. And these apps, um, you can download one called Magic Media, and this means you can generate AI photos and videos. Um, so if you're not find, quite finding the stock photo or the stock video that you want, you can actually type in your description. The more description, the better, and get Magic Media to make that for you. Um, there's a couple of examples on the next slide. Um, and if you're managed to get the pro account and the charity pro account, um, or if you're paying for it, you can get separate elements of your images. So if you've got, my example is we've had the Cozy Kingdom logo before, um, and that's a little hand sort of turning a thermostat. And we were able to pull the hand and the thermostat off of the background of that image and move it around and put it on to a different background. Um, so you can take certain elements, you can sort of highlight them, certain elements off your photo and you can pull them off and it means you can um, put them elsewhere in your design or you can get rid of the background and use that element of the photo on its own. Um, you can also erase it. Um, so there's the magic erase tool where you can highlight something you want to remove from an image. So I've used it before to remove people in the background of an image that maybe didn't necessarily want to be in that picture um, or are full, fine being in the photo but didn't want it used in this that certain way. Um, or if there's just something annoying in the background, like a stack of books or papers that clutter the image up, you can actually highlight them and erase them from that image. Um, you can also, as well as removing um, content from your photos, you can actually add content. This is sort of still in the beta stage, so sometimes it will be successful, sometimes not so much, where you can extend backgrounds in your photos. So let's say you had a photo of your garden and there's some sky at the top of the image. You could then extend the image up the way and it would create more sky for you that would blend into the image quite well. And stuff like plain black, plain backgrounds like the sky um, work really well in the extended backgrounds. But if there's a lot of complex stuff in your image, it'll maybe pull out the wrong things from it to extend. So have a play around with that one. It's not always the best. Um, but yeah, here's our examples of AI generated images and videos. So I've written the prompt that I gave Canva, um, and this is the one of the images that it, and one of the videos that it generated for me. Um, so for the image, I put an oak tree on a hill in the countryside with a purple and orange sunset in the background, and it pretty much nailed it, um, which is really good. Um, and for the video, I put a very simple prompt in, daffodils swaying in the wind in a woodland area. So if I press play on the wee video, you can sort of see them swaying around. Now, if you played the video for too much longer, you'd probably realise that the daffodil on the far right is having a bit of a moment. Um, it's sort of a bit artificial in the way it's swaying, but the others are generally quite good and they do really good short clips in terms of that. Um, so yeah, there's some really good things. Um, I'll maybe jump onto Canva in just a second and show you um, before I do a little summary. So yeah, some of the stuff I was talking about before in terms of Magic Studio. If I go back to Canva. I can go into Magic Studio. And so when you log in, you can click on Magic Studio and it tells you what is pro features and what aren't pro features. Um, so you can actually animate some of your designs that aren't already animated. You can morph some of your words and shapes into different things. They are a bit overkill um, if you're just trying to create simple designs. So unless you're doing something 
um, quite intense or you're just wanting to really play around, I wouldn't go too much into those features. Um, but the ones that you've just seen me use are text to video and text to image, which are really, really useful if you, like I say, you can't find a stock image or stock video that does exactly what you want. Um, so this one's Magic Grab, which was the one I was sort of telling you about. So once you're in here, you can be in the Magic Studio um, use Magic Grab. And here's here's the hot air balloon. You can put it in space now. So it's quite interesting um, that you can do different things. So if, yeah, if you've got something specific in your image um, and you either want to separate it from the image to get rid of it, because I could just then delete that hot air balloon, um, or if you want to put it against a different background like outer space and you can change the size as well. So even if you wanted to just make it a little bit smaller in your within your image, you can do that as well. So it is really, really useful. And then, yeah, using stuff like Magic Extend, um, like I say, I'll actually go back to it. In a second. So yeah, Magic Expand is what it's called. So you can try Magic Expand. And then you could make it 916. Click Magic Expand and it'll create a couple of suggestions on how to expand your image. That is one of the good things. Um, in quite a lot of the AI features, it will give you suggestions. Um, so it'll give you four initial suggestions. And if you're not quite happy with all of it, you can actually generate new results. So that's what it's come up with. Or there's a few different variations to choose from. Um, the first one looks the best probably um, but if you weren't happy you could just click generate new results and it'll basically try again for you um, this stuff's just worth having a little play around with if you've got the premium features um, and if you've not got the premium features the ai generation of photos and videos is good as well um, one thing i would say is don't do people or animals yeah, people's people and animals are are not good. <laughs> the the AI is definitely not at the stage where it can take on those sort of features yet, unfortunately. Um. So yeah, just a quick summary on the slides that I've just gone through. Um. Do think about your design, about using the right fonts, making sure you're spacing things out and that you're using the right colours and colours that complement each other. And if you've got particular brand colours, that you're sticking to them largely as well. Um, do take advantage of the text effects and the anim animated elements when creating videos. It can really make your life easier. AI is really starting to become a useful tool, as you've seen me show you. And just, as I keep saying, have a little bit of fun. The best way to learn is visual. It's to play around with things. Doing is one of the best ways you can learn. So just give it a little try, really. Um, is there, so we can move on to questions, if anyone has any questions for me or Gavin. Okay, uh, from Mandy, if you have created a text to image, can you use that image anywhere? No copyright issues. Uh, pretty much, um, there are guidelines on Canva that are maybe worth reading to see. Um, they're they're a bit trans a bit more transparent about and go into a bit more detail on the copyright. Um, sort of rights and stuff like that but we've never had an issue with it we've um, 
been pretty good at being able to use AI generated images and then using them on on social media. So yeah, I would say you probably can use it anywhere, but do double check those um, Canva guidelines. I think that's a really interesting thing that Mandy's brought up as well because it's super contentious just now um, with AI generated kind of for any creatives. Um, so right now I think it is you are able to use it, but like um, Andrea is saying, it's just it's keeping an eye on just in case that feature disappears or licenses have to change because it's taken its creation from somewhere because uh, it's been fed everything. So um, yeah, for just now, I think it's it's safe to safe to do it. So another one from Eileen, how do you upload photos? Um, can you use text, etc., on them? Absolutely. Yep. Um, you can upload a photo straight onto that image that I, I presented on my uh, screen with the, the flower um, in the elements section. Um, there's a, a, on the right left hand side, sorry, there's an uploads. So you can upload any picture. Um, so if that's one that you have taken from the charities um, from an organization, anything related to it, a family picture, something creative, you can absolutely upload that. Um, and with an uploaded picture as well, all the features that um, uh, Andrea touched on a little bit through the Magic Studio, if you're trying to remove backgrounds, which is a really, really common one. So if you want to, sometimes you've uploaded a picture maybe off a table, but you've got backgrounds around it. You can just select the the subject matter and it will get rid of everything else so it's really really clear and it looks really really swish uh, like you've had a graphic designer spend hours and hours and hours getting everything out of the the image so yep you absolutely can upload images um, and they'll also stay on canva as well so um uh, the free package i think comes with five gigabytes which is a lot of pictures a lot of high-res pictures um and once you upload it, it will stay on there so you can keep using it. So if you've got a number of kind of stock images, maybe you can just kind of refer back to them and, and pull them out if and when, uh, if you're adding them onto posters and things like that. So, yep. Yeah, basically it's click and drag. So when you're in the uploads bit and you're in your upload library, um, you've got your template, you can just click and drag your image into the template and then play about with the sizing and the background and stuff like that. The background removal tool is actually really useful for logos. So we've got a couple of projects which have older logos and we've had times where we needed to have it on, say, branded clothing or on flyers and it have a background associated with it. So a white square or a black square. And the background removal tool on Canva has saved our bacon a couple of times um, because you just upload the image and it will remove the background from it. So then you just get the logo as a standalone, which is obviously what you'd want to be printing. So it's got a, a transparent background ultimately. Um, so that's a, a really useful feature, which I don't think we touched on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just logos. save that as well, actually. Um, do make sure you save it as a PNG format rather than a JPEG, well, a GPG format, if you're wanting a transparent background, because that's, that's the way you do it. <laughs> 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 the we don't make the rules. How you can keep the the transparent background basically. Um, I just to say about getting the pro version, I had a bit of bother in the beginning. To you have to fill in a form and apply, uh, and I wasn't getting anywhere. So somehow I found an email address somewhere in Canva, and I emailed them, and I said. We're a, we're a CIC and uh, a kick. Can we? And she instantly emailed back, and then it just happened like that. So don't give up and just find an email, and it, you'll get that pro version with all those extra features. Yeah, Green and Cricordi had to fill the application in twice oh. um, to get it as well. So, <laughs> so do persevere. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely worth it for the free features that you would, well, the upgrade to pro for free basically on the slides that we'll send out I've, i think i've linked into the criteria for the sign up for um canva non-profit as it's properly called and um, so have a look through that as well and um, that takes you right to the kind of the information page for non-profit because they operate in i think 
I don't want to say every country, but I think Canva operate in most countries. So they've got a huge list um, depending on what country you're in. Um, so, but that is included on the, the my last slide um, that I'll circulate around. And then can I do the poll? Yeah, we'll take this from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that is a pro feature, Mandy, um, which is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, it's called Magic Switch. I think it did, did sort of show up on screen when I was going through the magic tools. Um, it means, yeah, you can try and, well, yeah, you can just convert your tool into another size. Um, or format. So if you want to make it a bit different for Facebook versus Instagram, um, you can switch it to a Facebook post template. And then you might have to do a little bit of playing around after it to get everything to sit right again. But generally, it does an okay job. Uh, yeah, we can um, do the poll now if you want to do that. So we've just got a couple of questions for you about about the session. Just a little quick poll for you. Uh, there will be a bigger evaluation survey that will get circulated around as well. Um, so with a bit more in-depth questions, but these little quick ones are really useful for us to just get a quick idea of every how everyone found the session. I think that's everyone's done the poll now. So thanks for responding to that, everyone. And yeah, so Andy's posted the SurveyMonkey link for the full evaluation survey. So it'd be really useful if uh, you could fill that out for us. Um, if you've not been to any of the previous workshops, um, there is the videos for them on YouTube. Are they publicly available on the Five Climate Hub YouTube, Andy? Or is it unlisted videos? They're they're publicly available on YouTube and they're also on our resources page on the Fife Climate Hub website. But I'll, I'll put the YouTube uh, link in the um, chat just now. Yeah, so there's sessions about press releases, um, about social media and all these other sort of great communications tools that you can use for your group or your organisation. And yeah, I think, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is the last of the sessions. Um, so there was four previous sessions, but there's loads of other great stuff coming up, including the Fife Climate Festival. I don't know if you wanted to let everyone know a bit more about that, Andy. Um, well, you've got until the 9th of February to sign up uh, any events that you might have going Uh on during the period of the Fife Climate Festival. I'll just try and remind myself of the date. Uh, so it's the 24th of February till the 3rd of March, and we've got a whole load of events already um, signed up. I'll put the link in the chat there. And that, it's events all over Fife. There's quite a lot of online ones and there's quite a lot of family ones. And um, yeah, so either go along to an event or if you have an event that's happening during that time, we can um, we can promote it for you. I'm really excited. Greer Kirkcaldy are doing a screening of Wally, -E, the Disney film. Uh, absolutely one of my favourites. So I'm very excited for that one. <laughs> Um, if no one has any more questions, though, um, we can wrap up a couple of minutes early. 
Okay. I don't know, go get a cup of tea or something. All right. <laughs>